Good morning and welcome to this episode of Random Guy number six. Today we are going to be tackling some barn doors. Now, as you can see here, these are the old closet doors. These old closet doors are going to be ripped out. And here are the new closet doors in these boxes. Now, I've never installed barn doors before, but I can't believe it's that difficult. So we're gonna learn this process together. Let's get these things unboxed and let's get started. Now that I've got the box open and you can see all your parts and pieces, the absolute first thing you always wanna do, no matter how hard you think you don't wanna do it, read the directions. So, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Kinda shows you on here, at least with this set, uh, each of these pieces are marked with corresponding numbers and you basically just slap them together and then uh, screw it all in at the end. So it's fairly simple. And these, these are unfinished. So I will be putting a finished coat and a poly coat on these. Uh, so these are marked, you can see there, the uh, each little stamp number basically on everything. So uh, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna switch to another camera and just start sliding these together and see how easy it goes. So it would seem that these doors come with the world's crappiest screws. Um, I tried adjusting everything to get everything tight and pretty much those, this one, and they, all the screws stripped. So uh, I gotta figure out how to take this thing back apart and uh, I'm gonna get some different screws, ones that will hopefully not be crap. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So I got one door all done and put back together, but I haven't attached these yet. Now, I think it looks better without it. Um, and I'm waiting for an answer back on whether they want them on or off. So here I'm gonna show you what it looks like with and without it. And why don't you decide what you like better? Let me know down in the comments. So the second door now has some problems of its own. I did pre-drill the holes to make sure everything was straight, but This piece of wood, you can see the size of that slot. Uh, they think is gonna fit in that slot, which uh, it does not. So I need to cut off probably about that much of that end of that wood, and it's the same on this side. Now, if you look at the bottom piece, you see they did it on the bottom piece, uh, they just didn't do it on that piece for some reason. So these are for sure things that you're gonna run into, I guess, uh, when you get these kinds of doors. So uh, I'm gonna have to cut some wood here. Now that the doors are fully assembled, it's time to move on to the next step, which is sanding. This is the fun part. Anyways, uh, anytime you have raw wood, uh, you have to sand it. There is imperfections in the wood, there's dirt, there's oils, there's just stuff on the wood that needs to come off before you stain it. Uh, I also did get some other good news, which is that we are not using these, which is fantastic. Um, so I can pretty much get rid of this. But if you are, or you do like this look and you are using these, um, do not attach them to your door immediately. Now the reason for that is with this off, you can sand all this really nice and even. You can sand this piece separate. And this is a really easy area to stain. Now when this is in and it's installed, 
and you're trying to stain around stuff like this, uh, it's really kind of a pain to get this edge to look not like garbage. So you leave this off, stain it. After everything's stained, then you can attach it and uh, put on your varnish or poly or whatever you're using to seal it. So that's that. We're gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna get into some sanding. So now that we have everything sanded and vacuumed, it is time to move on to the next step, which is to pre-stain it. Now, the reason you want to pre-stain is because if you don't, you can get kind of splotchy looking wood depending on the grain and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you pre-stain it, it will give you a more even coat. And when you do actually put the stain on, it'll just make things look better. But before even that, make sure you have one of these nice uh, Louis Vuitton uh, coveralls. I made it myself. It's even got a little hoodie. Uh, if you need one, let me know. I can, uh, I can whip you one up uh, any size. <laughs> uh, but uh, other than that, we're going to slap some pre-stain on this quick. It's super easy. Just dip your brush in it, slop it on. Uh, it's going to soak into the wood and then we're going to wipe it off a little bit uh, to get any of the excess off. And then we will have to stain this uh, within two hours ish. I think that I'm not sure what the can says. The can says, uh, yeah, within two hours. So once you pre-stain it, we can wait uh, 15 minutes and then we can stain it right away and it should be good to go. You can put it on thick. That would be what I would suggest because you want it to soak in the wood. More is better than not enough because you gotta remember, you are putting this on to seal the wood. So you wanna seal the wood and to get that even coat, basically, of, uh, of stain. And it's pretty much that easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. So now that our pre-stain is dried, it's time to actually stain this. So I'm currently using a Minwax gel stain. It works uh, pretty fantastic. This is mahogany colored. Uh, you can use any stain you like. Uh, they all work fairly the same. Uh, gel stain, you need to brush out a little bit more, but uh, it still works fine. You can, this is usually really good with your, like, your deeper colors. So uh, let's slap some on and see how it looks. Today is a new day, all the stain is dry, so it's time to do some polyurethane coating on this. Now, I have gone with a polyurethane floor coating and semi-gloss. Now, the reason I went with a floor coating is it's a little bit harder, it dries a little bit faster, and uh, you'll generally just get a better finish. Now, you need to make sure that you mix this, uh, always, because usually at the bottom, there is stuff that needs to be mixed back in. Nice, good, chunky stuff. Um, I like to mix it mechanically. You will just get a better mix. Now I want this coating to be a little bit darker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take a little bit of the stain and I'm gonna mix it into the polyurethane this is a gel stain, so I don't necessarily need a lot, but I do want it enough to 
color the polyurethane just a little bit. Now you can see there's a little bit of color in the poly. Just a little bit. You can still see through it. Real nice. So let me suit up and let's get these things sprayed. So I've now got the two coats of poly on these. It's time to flip them over, get them stained, get them polyed, and move on to the next step. So both of our doors now have two coats of poly on them. It's time to move on to the next and final beautifying process. So first thing we're gonna do is use some 220 grit sandpaper or a fine sanding block. Now with the sanding block, I would only use it on the areas that are perfectly flat. Um, otherwise what you'll end up doing is sanding through the stain or through the actual poly and through the stain making light spots and just making the thing look like garbage in general. So just, if you have like these center ones, you can see they're a little concave or convex. Uh, I would use the actual sandpaper for that. Make sure you watch yourself on the edges. Basically on all these edges, watch where you're sanding because if you sand through the poly, you're gonna sand through the stain, you're gonna have light spots and it's gonna turn out like garbage. So after that, we're gonna vacuum it all. We're gonna do some touch-ups on the edges and uh, gaps, holes, we're gonna fix all that. So I'm gonna get these sanded, vacuumed and then we'll move on to the next step. So now that this door is all sanded, it's time to fix all of the little imperfections, gaps, cracks, holes, and all that kind of good stuff. Now, if you're using a water-based uh, polyurethane, you should probably use a water-based putty. Uh, I am using an oil-based polyurethane, so I'm using an oil-based putty. So let me give you a close-up and show you exactly what I'm doing. Now you can see the gap in between the wood there. Basically, I'm gonna take this putty and just kind of mush it in there. You wanna fill that gap. Push it down in there as best as you can. Try and get rid of any of the excess. And that's basically what you want the gap to look like. Now you also need to pay attention for spots like this, where you see these little holes and stuff like that. You want to fill that kind of stuff too. Just take a little putty, and mush it in there. And once those are all filled, you'll be able to get the polyurethane to look perfect and even. So now that all the putty is filled in, all the cracks and holes and anything that doesn't look good, uh, we just need to wipe the whole thing down with a little bit of uh, mineral spirits or paint thinner or whatever you got. You really wanna wipe it down really well. Sure you go around those areas that you got the putty uh, really well. This will get the excess oil and stuff off of it. Now once I finish wiping it down, um, I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna set this one off to the side, grab the other one, take care of that one. Once they're all wiped and ready to go, we're gonna wipe it down with a tack cloth and then give it one final coat.
Now that the mineral spirits that I wiped on the doors has dried, it is time to wipe everything down with a tack cloth and then give it a spray. Now it might not look like it's doing anything, but I promise you it is. It's getting those last little bits of dust off. So our final coat of poly is finally on the doors, so it's time to actually install the rail system. Now the first thing we need to do is to measure from the floor up 80 inches, which is the height of the door, plus an inch and three quarter. Now that I've got three points marked, I'm gonna get a nice little level line. Now that we have our level line, it's time to actually grab the rail, basically size it up on here. We want the lines in the center of the hole. Now that we have these marked out, we're gonna pre-drill our holes right on the line. Yep, it'll hold weight. <laughs> there is some more hardware and stuff that we need to attach to the door. There's some track guides and things like that, but until I get the doors actually hung, uh, I can't really do any of that. We do have a problem. And uh, now when she bought this um, system, she had assumed that it was two rails, which would work, but be this being a single rail system, it will not work for this application, and I'll show you why. So you can see right about where the door ends there. And then you come to this side and we have a massive gap. So now while it does look good from afar, uh, when you actually look the functionality of it, um, it doesn't really make too much sense. So uh, I'm gonna pull this all off. She's gonna order another one and we're gonna install the correct one. So I guess just uh, keep in mind for yourselves, if you do want to go with this kind of system, make sure you get your doors big enough. Now, that wasn't, this system wasn't our original plan. She had actually ordered this single bar one on accident. Um, this opening is uh, 60 inches. And I did oversize these doors originally, not because of uh, a single bar system. So these are actually 32 inch doors, but they're just clearly not enough to cover this space with that overlapping uh, hinge like that. So if you are gonna go with something like this and you want that single pull, make sure you get the door, you know, I would say at least six inches bigger than half of the width of the opening. So <laughs> uh, we needed 36 inch doors and then this system would have worked just perfectly fine. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind for yourself. So now I've got all the incorrect hardware removed, it's time to put up the new stuff. Now luckily, this new bar, the holes are actually in the exact same place as the old bar, which never happens, but I got lucky for once. <laughs> so that's pretty fantastic. They're completely different companies, so I'm guessing they maybe got it through the same supplier, I have no idea, but uh, identical holes, so that one will go up easy. I'll have some more holes to put up there. Uh, first thing I am going to do though is put on the actual hardware on the doors, so let's get into that. So now that I've got most of the hardware back up to 
where I originally started with the new hardware, uh, it's time to add the additional hardware, uh, which is the second track. Now the second track, you want to line up with these bolts here. So basically what I would do is, or what I'm going to do is line this up so that those are perfectly level and even. Mark where these are supposed to go. Once I have those marked, then I can actually take one of the smaller pieces here and get these holes marked out. I'm gonna do this for all of these. I didn't hit a stud anywhere, so I'm gonna install some drywall anchors, get the plates on, and then we'll continue this process. So an issue you might run into is some of the anchors that come with this, if you're not putting a piece of wood uh, for the upper track to secure it to the wall and you're just going to use their drywall anchors, their drywall anchors that are coming with these kits are garbage. So I can almost guarantee you're going to have to go get some new ones because I just ran into this problem. I didn't realize that they were going to be so bad um, because you know it's, it's not a cheap system, it's not a cheap kit. So anyways, I'm gonna go get some better anchors and uh, anchor this thing on here properly. Now that I got the top track on, I'm going to do the final adjustments, tighten this thing down, rip off the old tracks from the, uh, from the sliding uh, mirrored doors and then uh, do some touch-ups here. I'm gonna call this job done, beautiful and good. Wrap up, do a little bit of cleanup, get the heck out of here and get on to the next project. So, I'll see you soon.